Um, started off uh, when I came to work for the Kellogg Foundation in 1986. Uh, it was pretty much expected that you have some sort of uh, relationship or, or volunteer role with the uh, CMF. So I served on uh, some uh, committees for the annual conference and uh, got onto the uh, CMF uh, legs and regs equivalent, uh, the public policy committee. And uh, of course, uh, every now and then worked with Dottie on some interesting activity that, that she was part of. Uh, we'll go into those in more detail later. Uh, became involved with uh, Michigan Nonprofit Association uh, right from the beginning uh, when Russ Mobby convened uh, the 10 CEOs and 10 board chairs of the 10 different organizations that uh, were then representing the nonprofit sector in Michigan. And of course, that tells you the problem right there, uh, that there were 10 different organizations, uh, each one with its own agenda, sometimes cross agendas. So uh, we organized that meeting. We uh, then organized a bunch of uh, follow-up meetings to help birth the Michigan Nonprofit Association. Um, great stories about uh, Pete Ellis, who was my colleague at the foundation, uh, saying, I'll drive and you watch for cops, and <laughs> dashing off to Lansing to uh, have yet another meeting to get it going. Uh, but uh, we were part of that. And then when the first uh, executive director didn't work out, uh, we uh, deputized one of uh, our Kellogg colleagues, Dave Egner, to uh, go run the organization. So involved with MNA from very early years, very first days. Uh, moving to uh, the, well, let's, let's, let's do the Johnson Center last. Uh, moving to the Michigan Community Service Commission, uh, it was, uh, as you well remember, Kathy Agard, uh, you who uh, chaired the meeting of my grantees uh, to, in 1991, if I recall correctly, that first uh, began to talk about the need for a community service commission in Michigan so that Michigan could get the federal money that was going to flow through the uh, Community Service Act, National and Community Service Act. And uh, that uh, meeting was held in Albion, if I recall correctly, at Albion College. And uh, so I was involved with that uh, to a, some extent. You were the one really driving it. Uh, but then I became a charter commissioner uh, and served three terms on the, the Community Service Commission uh, under Michelle Engler as chair. Uh, great, uh, great experience and organization, especially getting to play with uh, Governor and Mrs. Engler's three little uh, triplets who, who were just as cute as they could be at various functions. And, uh, and finally, uh, the Johnson Center, uh, which uh, grew out of uh, yet another Russ Mobby uh, intrigue in which he invited all of the, uh, I think it was 29 uh, four-year college presidents, university presidents, to a meeting at uh, Lansing at the Kellogg Center and said, uh, we'd like to help a Center for the Study of Philanthropy, Volunteerism, and Nonprofit Initiative get started in Michigan. And uh, all the presidents said, yay. And, and uh, Russ said, of course, we'll be expecting you to uh, match our gift. And the president said, ooh. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was only a couple of presidents' hands that were still up. One of them was uh, Don Lubbers at Grand Valley. And uh, I worked with him as the program officer to make the grant to uh, get the center started. So I've uh, been involved with uh, three of the four since the very beginning. Uh, only CMF was around when, when uh, I got here. Um, I was the first in my family to go to college. Uh, my dad worked in a factory. My mother was a waitress. And if you had ever said to the young me, uh, someday you'll be working in an organization in which you'll be handling millions of dollars. 
uh, I could not have conceived of that because I, I couldn't have understood how much that was. Uh, it, it was just a mind-boggling thing. Um, got started in, in philanthropy uh, because I was a grantee. I uh, was a grantee when I worked at the, what was then called the Kalamazoo Public Museum, now the Kalamazoo Valley Museum. And um, the program officer for the grant uh, called me one day and said, uh, there's an opening for executive assistant uh, to Russ Mobby, the chairman of the board. I think you should apply for it. And of course I did, uh, thinking that there was no way that I had a chance, that there would be people with much more experience in philanthropy. But I would perhaps get to meet Russ Mobby, and that couldn't hurt future grant prospects. So I went to the interview very uh, loose and confident because all I needed to do was charm Russ Mobby, right? And uh, I figured 15 minutes and I'd be out. And uh, after about 30 minutes when he was still asking questions, I realized this was a honest to God interview. And I think the rest of the time I said something like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> but apparently I did pretty well during the first half. I got the job as executive assistant. And interestingly, um, you know, that is, is, as Russ said, you don't want to retire as executive assistant. And there were folks who said, you know, all you really did was drive him around for three years, right? Well, yes, that was the main part of the job is, is driving Russ around, drafting his speeches and so forth. But, you know, here's a guy who thousands of leaders around the world would would die to talk to for 10 minutes. And I've got him for three hours on, a, you know, driving him to O'Hare Airport. So it was an incredible opportunity to seminar with him, to learn about the history of not only the Kellogg Foundation, but of philanthropy itself, uh, to learn how to do the job. Incredible opportunity. And then uh, Russ kicked me out of the nest and uh, over to the program side and assigned Pete Ellis to be my mentor. Uh, Pete was a, a Navy veteran, uh, 6'4", and uh, 240 pounds, just a, a bear of a guy. And uh, he, he was a great teacher. He'd been a coach in a previous life, and uh, he was a great teacher. Taught me really how to be a program officer. And a lot of the grant-making school uh, curriculum goes right back to Pete Ellis and, uh, and what uh, he taught me. So, you know, I had these, this wonderful opportunity, as Isaac Newton said, to stand on the shoulders of giants and uh, was able to take that opportunity. And one of the things I wanted to do with the grant-making school was to make that opportunity widely available. You know, not everyone can sit in the car with Russ Mobby for three hours or uh, have Pete Ellis take you under his wing. Uh, those were incredible gifts I was given. So passing those along uh, to other people in a more systematic way through the grant making school uh, made sense to me. And then the, to finish the story, uh, after 15 years at the foundation, as a, three as an executive assistant, 12 as a program director, uh, it was time to, to move on and uh, had the opportunity to become the first professor of philanthropic studies in the state of Michigan. So there will be many better ones, but there will never be another first one. And uh, uh, I love my title, which was Distinguished Professor of Philanthropic Studies, but had the opportunity to take one of my, my grants, uh, the Johnson Center, uh, and helped to, it to grow. And uh, when I came in, uh, there were, uh, to the staff, there were f three or four other employees, I can't remember exactly which, but uh, by the time I left, again, with the great work of Kathy Agard playing into this, uh, there were more than 30 employees, and now there are more than 50. So it is meeting a tremendous need and uh, it's, it's good to see one of your kids grow up and, and become a, an absolutely essential pillar of the community.